but I'm glad you know we are really um, discussing this because this is more like an epitome of uh, tolerance. You know, this panel is made of people from different worldviews discussing an issue like this. You know, and that is what our society is supposed to be. And what we find is that we have a trend that is going on where, uh, like uh, Greg pointed out, you see people pointing out that somebody is either intolerant or a bigot or something when they are actually bringing up ideas. So the major thing I, I got from his talk is the real issue is about this ideology that is purely self-referentially incoherent. And that is to say, you are in a process of not tolerating somebody else's views, and you are calling him intolerant. So if you use the same standard and apply it to yourself and what you are saying, you will see that you fall into the same trap. That is what it means to be self referential incoherent. So the postmodern definition of tolerance cannot be sustained. And uh, I, I hope that our message today that all of us here are going to live here with is that whether we are of one view or the other, we need to stand together against this postmodern trend. Whereby if somebody disagrees with you, then you are free to leave the issues aside and attack the person. That is totally wrong. And we see this playing out even at the highest echelons of power in this country right now. We have a bad situation where you don't even want your kids to listen to political news because all you hear is, or you see, is, a, is just bickering, you know. This party, you know, calling the other party names and the other one, calling the other one names. And you are looking for what is the substance of the issues at stake. They leave the substance and they keep calling names. So it's a time for there to be a new move of people who would stand on the classic um, definition of tolerance. In fact, it's still the the dictionary meaning of tolerance is when there are divergent worldviews, ideas or behaviors, the ability or willingness to tolerate one another in such situations. That's still the meaning. So we need to do that. And I'm sorry about the story you told. We are homosexuals, you know, we are surveyed and they had that kind of uh, experience. And that also plays out to what Greg was sharing. And that is to say that attacking a homosexual because he's homosexual, is attacking the person, not the idea, not the idea. And then focusing on the attacks on the person and leaving their ideas out, the divergent worldviews, is also a problem. Because that's another trend that I notice when we have people who have been victimized. And then we are really standing against that victimization, but we stay there and leave the issues at stake. I, do I, can I support a homosexual who was victimized and at the same time hold my view that is not in support of homosexuality as a concept, if you get what I'm saying? We need to be able to also differentiate between persons and the views. So when persons are attacked, I believe that it is a universal uh, uh, you know, a position for all human beings to stand against anything that is wrong. Anybody that is being uh, violated or anybody that is being uh, you know, uh, victimized or abused, we need to stand together to oppose that abuse. But that shouldn't make me go all the way now to drop my own conviction either way and then follow and all join. So everybody is not supposed to be or we never really get to a point where all of us agree on every issue that comes up. But we should also know that when any group of people are being victimized, for example, Greg's talk today used the example of Christians being called bigots, you know, intolerant and all that. Now, whether you're a Christian or not, it is your responsibility at any point in time where, when you're in a place where people are using that to say, no, 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 no. We also still need to tolerate their views. 
We might not like it, but we need to tolerate their views also and allow it to be on the table. So that is when tolerance is really tolerance. So when we get rid of genetic fallacies, calling everybody the same names and all that, and get rid of just hating people without even knowing them first, then we will begin to come back to the actual meaning of tolerance. Thank you. My question is, are we weakening our future generations by taking this idea that because we're all basically, by, are we weakening people by promoting the idea that it's okay and in fact proper to discourage questions that are upsetting to hear? Yeah, um, I was, uh, I gave a talk at uh, Washburn University at Topeka, Kansas, and um, after the talk was on the problem of evil, we had a Q&A like this, and a gentleman uh, came to the mic, identified himself as a philosophy professor. The very first thing he told me, he said, was that he was offended by something that I said. Philosophy professor. And I'm thinking inside, huh? How am I supposed to respond? No, of course I did the polite thing, which was to say, uh, I think I said, yeah, I'm sorry you're offended. Um, what offended you? But this is a trend that I, I'm, I'm going to weigh in and say I do not think is good at all. Um, when a philosophy professor can enter into a discussion about a critical issue by leading with my feelings are hurt, this is not a good sign for thoughtful engagement. And um, people who are used to demanding that um, others be silent about important things because their feelings get in the way um, are, are, are seriously hampering the discussion nowadays. And, I mean, there's a term for them, snowflakes or something like that. I mean, I don't engage in that kind of stuff, but what's a snowflake? I think it melts the minute you get a little bit of heat on it. Um, this country was not founded by people like that. It was founded, and we are, we are benefiting from, the, from the, 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 the toughness and the sacrifice that people who are willing to stand up to tough challenges of all sorts um, were willing, willing, they were willing to do that. And so we benefit from that. If we begin going in that direction, you know, we're going to lose everything. Because all a person has to say is, that hurts my feelings. And now what? I wanted to ask the professor if something that I said, I mean, if something that you said or believed hurt my feelings, would you change your belief? Would you stop saying what you're saying if my feelings were hurt? See how this plays out. It's not a healthy, it's not a healthy thing. Now, we shouldn't be going out of our way to hurt people's feelings. This has been the discussion tonight. Sometimes, though, it's not the manner, it's the idea. That's my concern. When ideas get silenced because they hurt people's feelings, then bad ideas begin to reign. That's not going to be good for our communities. Yeah, I just wanted to add one more thing there. Uh, feelings are neither good or bad or wrong or right. They are personal you know, properties that individuals can feel anyhow at any time. But ideas could be either right or wrong. And ideas are issues of the mind, while feelings are issues of emotions. So when we conflate these two, there is a problem. In our society today, that's a trend, but it's very dangerous. Because when you are dealing with ideas, that is not a time to respond with feelings. Because all of us feel one way or the other. So it is something that is important that you brought that question in this forum, because that is actually at the core of our you know, topic today, whereby we need to identify when there is a dangerous trend that, is, that diminishes our rationality, whereby people are now intimidated into asking opposing questions if they know that it will not be received. It's happening in campuses and all that, and I don't know how the new um, presidential order plays into this, 
whereby students are now given freedom to you know, have uh, opposing views on campuses. And I was wondering, okay, campuses are supposed to be the place where people are free to ask any question they want to ask and learn together and kind of build up their intellectual uh, you know, capacity. So if that was a system that was stifling that process, it's a good thing that we now have that kind of freedom. So yes, if we don't stop this trend, the next generation is going to suffer a lot and become very intellectually malnourished.